So the million dollar question is, has any preeminent civilization ever recovered from decadence? And the answer actually is a resounding no. <laughs> no, there is not a single example in all of human history of a society being able to pull out of the nosedive. They all have crashed and most have burned. Yeah, the question simply becomes how a society collapses, not if. Yeah. Currently, the discussion revolves around what's called the seven deadly scenarios, which mm. consist of variations of war, financial crisis, and plague being our undoing, and all of them end yeah. in catastrophe. Yeah, but what if there was an eighth scenario? What if there were some clues in history, which at least hypothetically would provide some much needed hope in this hour rather than just bleak fatalism? To observe such a reformative mechanism in history requires us to look not in the sphere of government or economics, but actually in the sphere of religion. Yeah, scripture certainly provides promises regarding a people turning from their depravity. The mm. dynamics at play are both natural consequences and supernatural judgment. Mm. For example, Proverbs states that righteousness exalts a nation while sin condemns it. Yeah. Of course, the famous passage which many would cite is Second Chronicles 7.14, which states that if God's people humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, yeah. then God will forgive their sin and heal their land. Yeah. But the problem, that passage is spoken specifically to Israel yeah. in certain historical context. So it's not a clear universal principle like the Proverbs passage is. However, we do have a universal promise to cling to. The prophet Jeremiah stated that if at any time any nation is scheduled for destruction, but they repent of their evil, that God will relent and not destroy it. This ties in with the passage in Daniel, which states that God changes the times and seasons, including raising up and casting down kings and kingdoms. Yeah, so let's look at the historical record then to test these principles. Yeah. Certainly every empire has risen and fallen, and clearly their fall occurred after moral decadence, so yeah. the data does certainly seem to support the biblical pattern here. Yeah. The question, therefore, is whether there exist instances in history where a nation actually changed mm. its trajectory. Yeah, and there are actually many, in fact. Several books and studies have documented the transformational effects a biblical worldview, specifically Protestant Christianity, has on any society. From Vishal Mangalwadi's book, The Book That Made Your World, to uh, Robert Woodbury's groundbreaking paper, The Missionary Roots of Liberal Democracy, there's ample evidence in history that wherever the gospel has gone, positive change has come with it. Even the historian and atheist Neil Ferguson admitted that Protestant missionaries sent during the British Empire had an enormous positive impact on the British colonies. Just contrast Singapore and Hong Kong to the surrounding Asian nations as a stark example of this reality. Yeah, not only do we see pagan societies radically transformed by Christianity and history, but also the renewing of the church where it is already planted. Hmm. History is replete with examples of revivals which grew into movements so large and powerful that entire societies were impacted. Yeah. But these large-scale revivals don't happen very often, and they tend to occur during the second turning, the awakening phase yeah, of the sociological right. cycle. The Protestant Reformation, the Puritan Awakening, the First, Second, and Third Great Awakenings, as well as the Jesus People Movement in America, hmm all occurred during the awakening phase. Yeah. What we have very little, if any, historical evidence of is revival and reformation happening mm. during the fourth turning, the crisis mm. phase. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's right. And, and we have absolutely zero historical evidence of such a spiritual awakening occurring in a society in the age of decadence. Yeah. But we do have both a biblical promise as well as biblical precedent. Again, Jeremiah states that if any nation at any time repents, then God will relent of his judgment. And we even see this borne out in scripture, such as in the book of Jonah, where Nineveh was spared from the destruction due to repentance. Mm, yeah. Now, it's important to understand what repentance is. Yeah. It simply means to turn away from wickedness. It's not the act of being sorry or apologizing, mm -hmm. but the actual changing of behavior. Yeah, and... If enough people in a nation turn from their wickedness and change their behavior, 
God relents of his judgment. Exactly how many people that requires is really anyone's guess. When God decided to judge Sodom and Gomorrah, he would have spared it for the sake of 10 righteous people. In the case of Nineveh, it seems the vast majority, if not the entirety of the people repented. Historically, we see pagan societies begin to shift and transform when about one third of the population repents and turns to God. Yeah, so the exact proportion of any given population required to repent in order to push back judgment isn't clear. But what is clear is that while roughly 65% of Americans claim to be Christian and just under half attend church, that number has been in steady decline, dropping about 13% just since our crisis phase began wow. in 2008. Wow. But even more worryingly, the vast, vast majority of those who claim Christ do not hold the biblical principles or morality. Hmm. Yeah, and it's it's not just Americans abandoning biblical truth, but even believers. Yeah. Survey results are shocking. Barner Research reported back in 2018 that only 9% of Americans hold to even the most basic tenets of Scripture. Beliefs that absolute moral truth exists, that salvation cannot be earned, that Jesus lived a sinless life, and that God is the all-knowing and all-powerful creator. Those numbers don't improve much inside the church. Only about 17% or one in six Christians hold those basic biblical beliefs. Yeah. And the numbers get worse with each generation. For Christian 18 to 23 year olds in America, that number drops to 0.8% or less than one in 100. Man, and to put those numbers in perspective, while only 17% of Christians believe even the most basic teachings of the Bible, 29% believe ideas based on materialism, 36% accept Marxist philosophies, 54% hold postmodern views, and a whopping 61% hold New Age beliefs, according to Barna. I mean, according to Pew Research, a full two-thirds of Christians today say that, at least in some circumstances, premarital sex is morally acceptable. Wow. In terms of practice, around 90% of Christian singles are engaging in that behavior. There's little difference between Christian and non-Christian support for the LGBTQ plus movement in our society either. <laughs> yeah, the American church has little to no moral authority at all at this point. She's just as decadent as the society around her. So revival and reformation has to start with us. As Jesus said, what good is salt if it loses its saltiness? It's to be thrown out and trampled on. Yeah, if the church doesn't repent and return to righteousness, we can expect a whole different set of biblical promises and warnings to come to pass. Yeah. But if we heed those warnings, we may yet see the largest spiritual awakening yeah. in all of history. Hey, I'm Josh. And I'm Joshua. Thanks for watching the eighth installment of this series about the potential eighth scenario. And join us in the next segment as we discuss what it would take to alter our society's current trajectory.